Ah yes, Windows Vista. Love it or hate it, it has become one of Microsoft's most recognized products ever. Though, maybe these days it's second to Windows Millennium Edition or Windows 11, depending on how you feel about the matter. Vista was a bold release, one with lots of expectation and, for the time, hype. Featuring a redesigned user interface with transparency, new and revised applications, a new release of Internet Explorer with tabbed browsing and RSS support, and lots of other new technologies under the hood, plus carrying the title of the longest development period of any Microsoft operating system in history, now technically second to Windows 11 from Windows 10 if you consider that to be relevant, you'd hope that Vista was a success story. Much like XP, it lived happily ever after the end. Well, if only that were true. Windows Vista was released to manufacturing on November 8, 2006, with general availability on the 30th of January, 2007. And it wasn't long before the word got out. System crashing. Driver incompatibility. program incompatibility, high system requirements and subsequent slow performance, largely in part due to superfetch, user account control nagging, lawsuits over Windows Vista capable PCs, and it just went on. Yeah, it wasn't looking too good for Microsoft at this time, and it wasn't helped that the Longhorn project constantly got poked fun at from one of their largest competitors either. Um, you know, here's a cool one if you haven't seen it called Countdown Calendar. So you bring up this Countdown Calendar, you go in the back, and you fill in the date uh, that you want to count down to. So I'm going to say 12 31 2006. I'm going to put in uh, Longhorn. <laughs> and uh, that's the days until Longhorn. Just counts them down. That wouldn't be the only time Apple got away with this. Later in the decade, the infamous Get a Mac campaign started to roll out after the launch of Apple's, at the time, new Intel-powered Macs, and only continued to get more relevant after the launch of Vista. Apple seriously could not have picked a better time to launch this ad campaign than around Vista's launch, and they absolutely got their free lunch out of it. And I mean, it's no wonder why it was successful in getting Windows users to switch to a Mac. Who wanted Vista after it launched and the word broke out? You gotta admit, it was a brilliant campaign. Funny, yet effective, and fondly remembered today. Hello. Anyways, getting back to Vista. Before its debut, Microsoft launched an advertising campaign to show off Vista, using the slogan of The WoW Starts Now. And while it was remembered fondly by some, it wasn't until 2008 when Microsoft refreshed the marketing in response to Apple, going kinda head on about it with the I'm a PC marketing campaigns, which inevitably trailed into the release of Windows 7, which made it more iconic for that OS rather than Vista, but I digress. Hello, I'm a PC and I've been made into a stereotype. I'm a PC, and I'm not what you call hip. I'm a PC, and I wear glasses. Despite all the negativity surrounding Windows Vista, it did have a good run, with extended security updates and technical support lasting until April 11th, 2017, including two officially released service packs in its lifetime. So while most of the stability and compatibility problems got fixed over time with new drivers, new hardware and software, and regular updates until the end of life, the reputation couldn't be shaken, and it would go down in Microsoft history as being not the worst operating system of all time, but certainly up on the list of problematic ones. So what made Vista that bad in the first place? Let's just say Vista's development was messy. It wasn't called the longest period between releases for a reason. It was multiple. Development of Longhorn started before the official launch of Windows XP RTM around May 2001, when Windows XP was just finishing off primary development, and it was initially based on its code. Longhorn was part of a greater roadmap that Microsoft had at the time, a rough illustration of it I'll try to put on screen. We'll start around 2000, with the current OS offerings being Windows Millennium Edition and Windows 2000. After the confusing nature that had been the Odyssey and Neptune projects Microsoft were developing to supersede the then current products, the two differingly targeted projects got canned in favor of unifying the code-based development of the consumer and professional product lines. There would also be no more MS-DOS based versions of Windows, instead making one new OS on the NT codebase to serve both markets. Whistler, as it was named. This of course would be called XP in its final iteration. 
Theoretically, this would have been the goal with Neptune and Odyssey, however, in hindsight, this may have caused the codebase to take differing turns despite both projects utilizing the Windows NT kernel as their foundation, but that's possibly a topic for another day. I brought this up so there's a little background on what I'm about to explain. Now, Longhorn's inclusion into the list is interesting. Microsoft employees at the time enjoyed going skiing in British Columbia, Canada on holiday. There were two notable mountain locations, those being Whistler and Blackcomb. In between both mountains is a favorite spot along the way in the middle of both, the Longhorn Bar and Grill. The philosophy behind the codename roadmap was creative. See, Whistler was a big release for Microsoft, of course, as it bridged the professional and consumer releases of Windows into one major version for both markets, unifying program and driver development for one codebase rather than two, or what may have still been two. And Blackcomb, as it was originally dubbed, was supposed to be the next major release. However, with everything they had planned for the OS, it was too far out to be completed in a reasonable time frame. Thus, Longhorn, the location in the middle, would serve as the intermediary release that wasn't nearly as feature-dense as Blackcomb, with a projected release time around 2003. Of course, that didn't happen, as history has shown us, because rather than being a minor release with all the WoW being saved for Blackcomb, well you know what happened. The OS's development was unfortunately met with feature creep as it went on, with features slated for Blackcomb making their way into Longhorn, which meant that it slowly turned into a major release, rather than a minor one as originally planned. This kept pushing deadlines back, which pushed back the release date. The OS's new technologies were also built upon new frameworks like .NET and managed C++ on top of the venerable XP RTM code, which did not help with stability or performance. Of note, team members and high-ranking executives at Microsoft described the project as a literal pig, of which Microsoft internally was seemingly aware of from these leaked presentation slides that you can see on screen. And the OS suffered greatly from memory leaks, slow performance, and lots of crashes. Poor employee morale was exemplified at this time too, which sure wasn't helping with quality. As a result of the internal disaster, the public saw very few exposures to Longhorn, with those being builds 4051 and 4074. You could almost say this was Microsoft's Copeland moment. There eventually came a crumbling point for the original Longhorn project, significant in that it was an action never done before on every prior Windows development cycle. For those who know will understand what I'm referencing, but for those who don't, development stopped and it had a big reverse card moment. The last build of original Longhorn was 4093, compiled on the 19th of August 2004. That same day, the OS was famously reset in development, of which a greater story will come later in the series regarding the event. A restructuring period began in the form of Omega 13, a reference to the time travel device of the same name in Galaxy Quest, a 1999 American science fiction comedy film to which the device would send the user exactly 13 seconds back in the past. The development restarted using the codebase of the then work in progress version of Windows Server 2003 Service Pack 1 release candidate code, with builds being compiled from this codebase as far back as August 3rd of that year. From that point onward, the OS took a stricter focus towards stability and refinement with reintroducing features, not all of which made their way back into the OS at this time, or at all. The final name for the OS was chosen on July 22nd, 2005, Windows Vista. The name was focused around the premise of wanting the PC to adapt to you, and aimed in bringing clarity to your world as it was dubbed by Greg Sullivan to Paul Thera. Microsoft aimed to market the OS with three terms, connected, clear, and confident. Microsoft Vice President Jim Elchin would also express enthusiasm for the product, stating that it created the right imagery for the new product capabilities. Development continued in the form of community technology previews and betas before closing development in November 2006 for an eventual release to manufacturing, notably after fixing a last minute showstopper bug which would render computers upgrading from Windows XP to be inoperable, and the rest is history. In this series, I hope to take a look at many of the leaked builds of Longhorn, exploring what the operating system was like, and explore the features as they progressed or regressed. My goal is to use real hardware to achieve the performance and compatibility of what may have been used to test the OS back in the day, and hopefully demonstrate each one best I can using information found and published to the internet and documented from sites like betawiki.net, whom I've used as a resource for the information found in this series, not just this video. So if you'd like to explore these builds for yourself or other builds, they have a great resource that I highly recommend you check out. There will be a link to their website in the description for each of these videos in this series. 
And with that having been said, thank you for watching, and please stay tuned for more episodes as they roll out.